Hey guys, uh, good afternoon everybody. My name is Daniel Sokolovsky, I'm CEO at Axel Hire. I uh, just want to walk you through a little bit more about our company and tell you about what Axel Hire has been able to accomplish over the past three and a half years we've been in business. Uh, we're a next generation delivery company. What I mean by this is that we've, what we've really done is we built a kind of technological infrastructure that powers any kind of carrier. So within our network, we go out, we facilitate line hauls with trucking providers, we facilitate sortation and warehousing through our 3PL providers, and then we go ahead and actually facilitate the first mile and last mile deliveries with drivers who are working, you know, contracted through us or working through a company that's contracted with us. Uh, you know, right now we have major presence on the West Coast. This is a slightly older deck, but we're already in all of those markets now. Uh, we're doing about 200,000 shipments per month across those areas. Uh, last month we also launched Pensacola, and we've been doing pilots in Detroit uh, over the summer too. Uh, basically, I would say that, you know, majority of our clients and, and how we kind of grow our geographical footprint, it's really determined about how quickly can we service a customer and how many customers can we service out of the traditional you know, distribution facility areas like Stockton, Las Vegas, Reno, and who can we get to in one day, right? And so, of course, and, and I heard you guys ask earlier about a supply and demand problem, and, and really, you know, we get the most economies of scale about operating in bigger cities, right? But we don't go out and just operate in the city of San Francisco. We go out and we're servicing the entire kind of greater Bay Area. And so right now, we're already in, uh, you know, six of the of top 20 uh, most populated regions uh, across, across the United States. Uh, we have a number of offerings that we provide to our clients. So we work directly with, uh, you know, companies who are shipping directly to consumers. Some of them also ship to businesses. Uh, so, you know, key, key accounts are HelloFresh, Walmart, uh, companies like Trader Joe's and Costco use us for their distribution. But in terms of our service offerings, what we provide and what we specialize in is the same day and next day. Uh, we, of course, do LTL and full truckload. Uh, it's not our bread and butter business, and it's something that we provide as an auxiliary service to the clients who work with us for the last mile capabilities. And uh, on the West Coast right now, we're the number one perishable shipping provider, uh, specifically uh, in charge of grocery, uh, any kind of perishable meals. Uh, all we, we do end-to-end -end refrigerated for, for those kind of things too. Um, for merchandise categories, like I said, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that now we're working with Walmart. We're delivering their grocery segment, which is the highest, you know, highest growing product segment for Walmart currently. Uh, and so when we started out originally, we were trying to reach for the lowest hanging fruit, right? Who was having the most issues with FedEx? Who was having issues with UPS, with local courier companies and other carriers? And what we found is that perishable shippers actually, because of time sensitivity, because of special handling instructions, had the, most, the, had the highest percentage of problems. And so we kind of took on after them. And once we're able to solve things about, you know, same day shipping, next day shipping, and got our SLAs up to, you know, over 99% accuracy, now we're able to go ahead and provide that same exact type of business to e-commerce companies, uh, businesses who are shipping household goods, CPG companies, uh, and, you know, and, and many other businesses. Uh, we have a, I would say, integrated solution. Of course, you know, some of these things uh, the Live, Uber, Rush, GPS have, but what we really have built, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is an end-to-end -end system that is capable of handling any kind of logistics needs. And so if a customer comes to us, like somebody earlier, uh, you know, said, hey, can you guys just handle our full truckload component? That's fine, as long as we have the supply of the trucks, of you know, potential warehouses that we need for cross-docking facilities, our business can operate and the software and the operations model work uh, you know, with positive unit economics. I would say that's probably the most important part and one of the most significant differences with our business uh, compared to other startups in our space. Our first attempt success rate is a little bit higher now. It's at 99.2%. Our delivery MPS score is 92. Uh, these are all customer reported. So first attempt success rate, that's the number one KPI that we measure. So what that means is how often are we delivering the first time that we're trying to do that attempt, right? Because we all know the issue with redeliveries, higher costs, higher customer complaints, specifically with perishables, you know, potential perishability, and, and that would be a complete failed delivery. And so because of that, because we built out our, our model around, you know, meeting high SLAs, making sure that we're delivering delivering quickly, making sure we deliver on time, we've been able to perfect the first attempt success rate. Sorry for you, the other carriers in the room. <laughs> Uh, I, I would say probably one of the most part, important parts of the business, and this is kind of a philosophical difference and philosophical change that we have. We try to keep our vendors happy. That means that our drivers get paid well. They're getting paid you know, upwards of $25, $30 an hour. So that means that we're beating Uber, we're beating Lyft in terms of comp competition on hourly wages. Uh, on top of that, our warehouses are getting paid well. These are businesses who can self-sustain. Uh, it's typically mom and pop you know, warehouses, about you know, 50 to 100,000 square feet that are going, and they need to make sure that they're making money and that we're not squeezing them. 
I think in addition to that, our truck drivers are happy working with us and are constantly offering us you know, to open up more lanes and always have capacity available for us because we are a fair pair. Uh, somebody yesterday called us you know, the Walmart of logistics. <laughs> We're nowhere close, yeah, not yet. Uh, you know, and so for a quick overview of our process on our software, we're running short on time. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, we go end to end. And so we have different applications depending on who is the viewpoint coming from. So whether that's our client as a business, whether that's our client's customer service team, whether that's our own dispatchers and our internal in-house operators, or if it's, you know, our warehouse staff, our trucking providers, in addition to that, our last mile delivery drivers. Basically all of them have a piece of technology that we're providing to make sure that we provide utmost real-time transparency. And so this is our shipper dashboard. They're basically logging in here. Customer service teams are logging in every day and are trained to make sure what's happening with the package, where's the photo proof of delivery, what time was it delivered at. Uh, within here, we have a quick example of a routing. You know, effectively, it's more efficient than the typical point-to-point -point delivery method. Uh, we have a heterogeneous fleet, so what that means is that we can operate with multiple different vehicles. Like I mentioned earlier, we have refrigerated vehicles, we have 53 for trailers, cargo vans, sedans, and all the kind of all around from there, too. Our dispatchers are going out, constantly tracking to make sure every single delivery is delivered successfully. As you can mention there, there's a couple red bars and those are notifications that we're flagging down for any failed deliveries or potentially late ones. Uh, for the hauling and sorting part of our business, it's a very simple dashboard. I would say it's pretty user intuitive uh, for the warehouses who are using it. Our driver app, uh, we actually just released our new tracking link last week. Haven't had time to update it on our decks. And that's all. And so I would say, guys, our most important ask and, and probably the biggest reason for me being here is we're really looking to start expanding our business and we're really looking to figure out, you know, what is our next big partner? You know, we've grown from a business that was only working with other startups to now working with, you know, the Fortune 1 company, thankfully, and some of the others in the Fortune 1000. And so really we're looking for people who want to push our volume, make sure that we're kind of, you know, fulfilling all of our capacity and who want to keep delivering success within their own customers' journeys. In addition to that, of course, you know, as, as a Silicon Valley startup, we're always fundraising, and so I'd love to take any feedback about that as well. Thank you, everybody. Com compared to uh, like FedEx and DHL, for example, mm -hmm. you say that you can do it m more affordably uh, and also better mm -hmm. uh, and quicker than all of them. How are you able to do this with some of the largest uh, Parcel delivery companies, for example. Yeah, so we, we call we call the the three pillars better, faster, cheaper, right? Uh, I can start with the very uh, the, the latest one, the cheaper. So basically, traditional national carriers have a pretty wide and pretty complex hub and spoke network, and so that's really good for driving really high volumes of deliveries. But the problem is, being set up a few decades ago, what what they were optimizing for was how do we ship in three to five days, right? And so with that, they set up their own kind of network in a way where you know their warehouses. If, if and, and I was giving you the example earlier is that if you're in San Francisco and you're sending it down to San Jose, it may end up going through two or three or four hubs even, right? Whereas with us, if you guys are, if you're going out and sorting a shipment, at most it's going through two facilities. And because of that, we have greater flexibility, we have faster time in transit, which goes back and translates to why we're faster. Uh, it, you know, and, and we're able to go ahead and kind of fine tune a lot of the processes. Of course, their network is built in a huge way and it's able to handle millions of packages a day. Right? I would say ours is getting there, but what we're doing instead of going out and having to leverage, you know, building out multiple hub units and things like that, what we're doing is we're localizing inventory, doing things like mobile hubs, you know, and basically cross-docking trailers in San Jose or in San Francisco uh, from which our drivers are just unloading out of there. And so instead of us going out and, and going facility to facility to facility, we're going to facility, maybe to one more facility and then directly to the customer. And I would say that's, that's, why, you know, that's why we're cheaper. We don't have the same touch costs that are involved with UPS and FedEx, and that's why we're faster. From a better standpoint, I think it's, it's really a philosophy, right? And I think it, it goes back to down to having happier drivers, make sure that everybody's getting paid. But in addition to that, we have a software that's fully transparent. And so the second that there's an issue, the second that we're predicting that there may be a late delivery, there may be a failed delivery to this particular address, our dispatch team is working from the morning trying to make sure that this doesn't happen. Right, and again, we, we contractually oblige to really high SLAs just because that's you know, the relationships that we try to get with our customers. And so with that, it's really uh, a model perspective that we've been able to go out and, and, and change within the software, within the operations, and, and, and within the overall kind of structure of the business. Do you have your own company-owned uh, company drivers or do you contract all of your... 
everything is contracted out to vendors. So it's third party providers. Some of those are individual drivers, so they're independent contractors. Some of those drivers work through a company and so we contract with a company and they may have employees or they may have other contractors too. We don't own any assets whatsoever, so we don't have warehouses, we don't have any trucks, we don't have any trailers. But we, again, like I said earlier, we do make sure that all of those costs are paid off for our vendors and they're making some money on top of that. And how do you attract those drivers to your company? How, what's the recruiting I, I, process or the marketing process really? Yeah, so I think our supply and demand kind of chart is a little bit different than your traditional Uber or Postmates, right? With them, they need to have enough drivers or enough supply on the road before they can go out and satisfy demand. And so when they have less drivers than necessary, they go up and have surge pricing that goes in and make sure, you know, that, that some customers are falling off. Or vice versa, when they have too many customers on, they're going out and lowering the cost of the drivers to make sure that the balance is more equal. A lot of our stuff is scheduled. A lot of our things are known in advance. We, we work enterprise deals, so it's relatively predictable. We're looking at, you know, what's our Monday, what's our new volume coming in, what are our projections, and we're kind of scheduling and the system is going out and allocating resources around that, right? And so with, you know, w with, with this kind of process, we're able to go out and make sure that when we're putting a driver on the road or when we're opening up a warehouse with a potential vendor or putting a truck on the road, we know that our costs are covered, right? And I think that, that's a much bigger thing for us is that even if, our, even if our vehicle's only 50% full and we have to take a hit on the margin or it's 25% full, we take a hit on the margin, that's fine. But the most important part is that our vehicles, our warehouses are never empty. So I'd imagine your proprietary software is a mm -hmm. big reason for your success. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so is, is, is your company co consist, mo is that something you developed in-house or did you outsource that as well? No, no, so we didn't out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the, that, the, yeah sorry, sorry. Would the brain, like, the brain, we outsource the Are you like a tech feet. company? Yeah. Do, do you consider yourself more of a tech company than more? Absolutely, you know? yeah, over 50% of my OPEX is all in tech, right? And so it's not, not only that, everything is built in-house, it's all proprietary, we don't, you know, we've taken a look at traffic data, we used to use vendors for historical traffic data, things like that, now all of our data is running in-house. Of course, when we expand to a new region, we're trying to scrape some existing data, we use companies like Esri as partners and things like that to make sure we get it. But as far as all the brains of the company are in-house, proprietary, we even have our own, uh, we, we have our, so we use a private cloud and then we also use Google Cloud. And so with the private cloud, all of the routing, all of the resource allocation is done privately. Servers that we built, that we manage. We call it actually Axel Hire Web Services, <laughs> AWS, right? And so uh, the, the big, bigger thing is that uh, it, it's fully proprietary. It's fully built in-house. We have a team of you know, professional transportation engineers who are going out and, and contributing to it. I, I play a little part in that, but you know, it's more like prod product management than anything else. Thank you. Okay. Great, I think we're out of time. Thanks. All right, thanks, guys.